of different kind of art forms that opera traditionally is has always walked hand in hand through opera history as a with with a sense of technological adventure so whenever it's been possible to do something new usually opera has done it my name is Laurie Lixenberg and I'm a, I'm a singer in this and um, I suppose this character that I'm playing isn't so much a character as um, like uh, exploration into what is human and what is cyborg. So we're kind of exploring different levels of human and non-human, robot and non-robot, and wanting to change from one world to the other. And I suppose I'm particularly exploring that um, through voice. What is robotic vocal virtuosity? Like, what does that mean? What would that sound like? And I also wanted to explore a kind of hybrid vocal area between robot and human. We created a story whereby the robot wants to transition from the robot world to the human world. Um, and instead of um, thinking that she is the creation of humans becoming a more sophisticated machine, we imagine that she's the creation of machines becoming a more sophisticated human. So what, sh what we've done is to try and see the story as if from the robot's eyes, uh, and uh, we play with images of fruitful confusion about who the robot really is in space. So the Clio robot is duplicated by a singer robot who is also duplicated by a dancer robot. I was really interested in seeing how we could make the robot improvise and there's a few different ways we've been trying that. One of them is with the pre-programmed language that she already has, so a programmer has created movements and put them in and we got Mike the programmer here working with us to just put them in randomly so we as performers, Laurie and myself, didn't know what was coming next and we played with the idea of matching her movements or being in opposition to her. In a way, um, the, the robot is a kind of puppet uh, through which we are enacting pre-decided uh, pre routines um, and through whose voice we are ventriloquizing potentially our own voice. So it connects to quite ancient traditions in a way. Specifically for the opera, there's so much that the robot needs to be able to do. Uh, it's a performer. So, you know, and if you've watched the director, you'll have seen the detailed instructions that humans get, and those instructions are just as detailed for the robot. Um, except the robot obviously isn't listening. I am, and so I have to translate it all into actual robot behaviour. 
I'm intrigued to see how much further we could push her improvising and if we could remove Mike as a programmer setting her improvisation to see if there were sequences that AI decided on itself as opposed to us. It, it is a kind of a dialogue and, the, and there was this interesting moment where we held a, a mirror to her for the first time and you could see that her eyes were lighting up, the blue, the, her face went blue on the computer screen which meant she was tracking her own face, sort of recognising herself. You, you, you. There is improvisation because on some of the pieces I'm actually typing, improvising um, sounds that are coming, as it were, from the robot. Did, 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 did you say that? There's a kind of dialogue, but it's it doesn't have a responsiveness to it that you have with another human. So I'm much more heightened and aware of her and myself and the space in between us than I might be with a, a kind of real life performer. No, 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 no. Did, did I say that? For me, if the did, robot did, goes did, did, wrong, that's just, that's, uh, in a way, that's the robot expressing its agency. You know, it's like, we tell it to do all these things and it might not do them, yeah. just have to cope. So. I think that's okay. I think that's quite interesting, actually. It's near the end. It's the end. Did you say that?